All right, in this little break, the messenger comes and tells Lady Macbeth that Duncan is going to be dining at their house tonight. And so she says, the raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Fatal suggests that Duncan will not be returning alive from this dinner party. Now Lady Macbeth breaks down three individual sections where she begs something to come to her. And she says, come here three times. So I want to pay attention to uh, this kind of repetition and parallel structure in the soliloquy. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Okay, these spirits that tend on mortal thoughts... I don't know if that sounds a little spooky to you, but it sounds a little spooky to me. Uh, It seems as though she's uh, connecting here to some kind of supernatural being. And given what she asks, it doesn't seem like this supernatural being is very nice. She says, unsex me here, which essentially is her saying, take away my femininity. So Lady Macbeth is is not asking here to be a man. But what she is asking is that any compunctious visitings of nature, which means aspects of her nature that she can't help. And for her here, this idea of like the feminine is uh, connected essentially to things that are soft or to things that are uh, kind or to things that are inherently merciful. And she says, I cannot have that if I'm about to do this action. And so instead she says, fill me with dire's cruelty, make thick my blood. All right. When she says stop up the access and passage to remorse, this here is like uh, those like um, those like old fashioned like uh, tub drains, you know, Uh, like a a plug in the drain. So she says, like, make it so that like nothing can can get through. So there's going to be like it's impossible for me to feel remorse. All right. She has to not feel guilt about this. Nothing that's going to shake my fell purpose. Fell means evil or dark. Next, she says, come to my woman's breasts and take my mil- milk for gall. Uh, milk, of course, here has already been used in the soliloquy to refer to Macbeth's softness, too full of the milk of human kindness. Milk is life-giving. Milk is connected, of course, with innocence, uh, with uh, children and, you know, with, uh, with infants. Now she instead says, come to my woman's breasts and take my milk with gall, replace my milk with gall. Gall is uh, is essentially stomach acid. It is it is bitter, 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 bitter. So she says again, take any of that soft, life giving, um, natural aspect of what it means to be a woman. Take that away from me and fill me instead with stomach acid. You murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Shakespeare does some cool things in this section. He uses alliteration, which, of course, you're, I'm sure, familiar with. Sally sells seashells at the seashore. Those repeated M's, uh, and we also get repeated S's here. But he also uses a lot of consonants, which is repeated uh, consonant sounds. And so in, in particular, these S's that are kind of bitten off. I mean, you could picture Lady Macbeth wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. You can say that with your teeth clenched and you can hear the kind of like hatred and the, the uh, direness and the fellness of her purpose in those harsh <laughs> kind of sounds. Finally, she says, come thick night and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. I have a particular affinity for the dunnest, as uh, the dunnest of us all. Uh, but in this context, it just means gray or smoky. The dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. All right, now she's made an appeal to these like murdering ministers, these evil spirits to fill her with cruelty, to take away any aspects of her femininity that would stop her from doing this evil thing. Now she makes an appeal to darkness itself, And what is she asking of this darkness? She's asking it to cover her uh, and especially to cover her action, that it would be so dark that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Again, the basic goal here is stop anything that would stop me.
Stop anything that would stop me, all right? So if it's my nature and a uh, quailing over the idea of murder, cut that off. If it's like the, I need secrecy for this. So if there's any light that's going to come through or anything that's going to happen, uh, stop me here as well. And we can't help but think here in this line about Macbeth's previous line where he asks the stars to hide your fires, let not light see my deep and dark desires, right? It's a similar appeal to nature. It's a similar appeal that nature be on board with this murder, uh, which for an Elizabethan audience makes no sense that in the natural order of things, the king being the natural hierarchical figure for humans, uh, nature does not seem to be on board or wouldn't naturally seem to be on board with the killing of a king. And yet that's the request that both these people make, that um, that nature would intervene to make it easier for them to do this. The big question, of course, by the end of this for Lady Macbeth is who does she remind us of? She's asked to be unsexed, right? She's neither man nor woman. And doesn't that remind us just a little bit of the weird sisters who are also kind of in this sort of spectral in-between place where their humanity is up for question and we're wondering, well, what are these beings actually? And that's the question here that, of course, uh, we ask about Lady Macbeth as well, filled with gall, uh, thick blooded, completely cut off from remorse. Uh, we have a sense that she has asked for all human feeling to be dulled um, or at least to be uh, replaced with hate.